Oh, God. So, I brought my most conservative hand. That's a good one, yeah, that's a good one. So, so you survived the evening all right? Yeah. I, I think it was quite a good evening. Yeah. Well, a number of people who were complimentary to uh, you know, people that I had no. known. Look at this. No, <laughs> several people in the audience, obviously. Yeah, so you know, Claxton was there, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the curators from County. What an amazing photo. No, right there, please. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 No last questions. What's that? They all got there. Yeah, and, and, and uh, Stephanie and Carol. Yeah. Yeah. Stephanie and Carol, I mean, yeah. Really, really, I mean, what surprised me is why they haven't oh, called you. Oh, that's exactly valuable, that photograph. That's a good one. That photograph could be worth it. Personally, is it come over and tell us some Well, I did. Well, in fact, after last night, as terrible as it sounds, uh, after last night, thinking about the whole thing and just thinking about how much information there is and how many, you, how little you can impart in an evening. In a, in a like short that. period of time, that's exactly right. And how exactly right. you can't join Jules it together, and how you can't make a logical <laughs> flow of it, you know, in, in that kind of a situation. And yes, the composite of all of these lectures pays off. But the, uh, Everett, Everett could have gone for three hours on his own. <laughs> he, he did. He, 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 he did. He did. You try to give people some anecdotes and a Yiddish, feeling for it. Anything you want. You can't be comprehensive, but you can kind of get a sense of what the scene was like, which well, is really all you can do. That's all you can do. And just kind of touch, you know, touch on it. That's, 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 that's not a bad thing to start with. When Jabba and Chandler opened up the music Center That's to correct. West Side people. Correct. Right. Uh, and Pasadena did it too late. They got me on, but before me, they got well, me. Well, let's start. Let's let's start on that because people wouldn't believe this actually. Um, that in the early '60s, Pasadena's board was 100% WASP. Yes. Uh -huh. LA County's board, as far as 100% WASP. Well, Cash right. Driver was on it early. No, was but not until people? not until Rick came. Not until Rick came. Rick came. Not until Rick came. Rick is the one that put the first Jews on the board. Yeah. Where? At the, at the LA County. That was pretty early, I think, wasn't it? Well, it would have been 62, 61, yeah, 62. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it was the 60s. Yeah, yeah. right. But because the board didn't mean as much because it was, it was a modern expo park. That's but right. It moved. That's correct. But, uh, but were a lot of your, both Everett, all of your clients, I'm assuming, were Jewish, a, a high percentage. Well, high, a, a, high, a high percentage. <laughs> A high, a high percentage of Jews. Of course, there was Bob Rowan, you know, who wasn't. There was Ed Jans, who right. wasn't. She always uh, thought, I always thought Bob Rowan was Jewish. <laughs> I, I kind of did, did too, but I, yeah, well, I, yeah. I know that he wasn't. He, he never, he never thought of it. They would have, they would have, they would have, they would have <laughs> driven about a Pasadena. Yeah. Yeah. Laura, <laughs> Laura, Laura Woods, so she wasn't a major patron, but she was yeah. not Jewish. Okay, yeah, yeah not Jewish. Yeah. But, so, uh, but, but yes, the, the majority percentage. were. The majority were. And, and I think that, I think that's, Fairly consistent well, uh, throughout the country, you know. We yeah, have, we've been brought up where you couldn't have a graven image. That's one of the theories, the Jewish people. So all of a sudden, when there were graven images, you could use them that way, but not in the synagogue or temple. That's right. Right. So, right. Was but so many, of, so many of the, of the collectors that we had were from the entertainment industry. That's true. And that's yeah, a big factor. Because they, they well. had the excess the discretionary money, money. to buy right. things. Well, but that's something we should talk about because, in my view, the entertainment industry was the biggest disappointment. Disappointment. Oh, yes. In my view, yes. I, I, yes. I couldn't agree more. That's yes. right, because yeah. they, they didn't come through. That's right. But yeah, they, they were, were there. there. <laughs> well, there were one or two. You mentioned Eddie Robinson last night, uh, 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 Vincent well, Price, who was a dear, you know, really was a sweet know, person. Michael Blank. I will happily tell you. And Michael. One or two of my experiences with the movie industry. Uh, which will illuminate a lot of what we're saying now. <clears throat> I uh, went to New York and a friend of mine said at that time, middle 60s, I'm very friendly with Philip Gustin. I said, I love Philip Gustin. Uh, any chance we can visit? The guy said, just a minute, got on the phone. Gustin said, come right over. We went to visit yep. him in his studio. He had a lot of things around. There were two framed, incredibly yeah. beautiful watercolors. Yeah. I said to good. Philip, one of these. He said, did them recently, liked them, wanted to see how they, how, how they would look yeah. framed, uh -huh. had them framed, they just come back. I said, they're beautiful. He said, they are beautiful. They are. He was very I said, good in that medium. Very, very, very good, good in every medium. Things, but, I said, yeah. will you sell them? He said, you want them for the, for the gallery in California? I said, yeah. He said, yeah. He gave me a price. I agreed. Sent him a check. Three weeks later, a crate arrives, open the crate. There are these two astonishing watercolors. I look up at the door of the gallery, 
big car, lady gets up, chauffeur driven car, heading Lamar. Oh, yeah. yeah. Heading Lamar comes to the gallery, what's this, what's this, who did that, what's that, what are these? Ah, I was just in New York, I explained the whole kind of gusty. She said, I love it. I said, they're beautiful. I said, they're jewel-like. You're incredibly correct in, in your attitude about them. She said, how much are they? I tell her. She said, I'll take them. I said, great. She said, carry them out to the car. I carry them out to the car, put them carefully in the trunk with cardboard. She gets in the car, she drives off. I never see her again. <laughs> Do you, you know that she was I tracked her for 10 years, That's right. couldn't find her, called several people, I said, she's a known kleptomaniac. That's I said, right. known by who? <laughs> <laughs> I assisted her. If I recognized anybody who came, in, uh, came into my gallery and they were a movie star, I would leave. I'd go out the back door. <laughs> you know, Henny was. Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tony Curtis yes. comes in to see Cornell. Yes, right. Comes he back three yeah, weeks he later with a box. A box. Made, I said, made. What's this, Tony? He said, Well, I made this. Looking at me as if to say, uh, would you like an exhibition? That's right. <laughs> That's right. You know, Henny, Henny was uh, Paul Cantor's girlfriend for quite some time. I remember. That's right. Uh, yeah. My feeling, Everett, yeah. is that those two watercolors wound up at Paul's. Oh, oh, right. Right. <laughs> Paul never said he never got them, never knew anything about them. I think he had. I used to be very friendly with him socially because yeah. he's very hard to do business with, and he was always talking about the Empress. The Empress. Yeah. Empress. And yeah. then finally, yeah, he, uh, I would ask him, and, and uh, he said, "Well, we don't see each other anymore." So I said, "Do you mind if I call her?" And he said, "No." So I called him, you know, yep. let's chutzpah. Yep. I called her yep. and said uh, something like You, you didn't say you don't have two custom watercolors. No, I said that you'd be interested in another <laughs> young man. <laughs> Good. And, uh, and she said uh, something like, listen, Sonny, it's flattering, but I'm not, a, I'm not reachable. Uh, <laughs> I said, thank you very uh, much. I enjoyed your film. Yeah. <laughs> we should have said, Mr. Lamar, I'm here with a big check. <laughs> There's a very famous story about him. Yeah. But she, because everyone is always uh, oh, yeah. uh, um, Brilliant mind. taken by the yeah. uh, movie industry, the yes. glamour, yeah, the glamour. Of this, this Gus and story is right. part of it. Right. So Hetty, and this happened, we, we know it for a fact, because at least one of the artists, I forget, might have been Gustin who was there, yeah. told us that we got close to him. So Hetty calls up and says, I'd like to have dinner with you. So who shows up that night? Like, might have been Gusson, but I know uh, Jackson Pollock, yeah. uh, I think, Barnett Newman, oh, oh, yeah. four of the artists. Yeah. They set up, and, and there's easels set up with a, with a canvas. This, this actually happened. So, and so each of them look at each other and say, well, I thought I was the only one here tonight. Right. <laughs> and they said, no, well, gee, I guess you invite So they got into it. Okay, it was heavy with Yeah, right. It was the fun of it. Right. So she comes up and says, well, I wanted you to just paint something before dinner or something. So, okay, so they got into it, they each did something that wasn't <laughs> too, yeah. too big, and one of them showed up at an auction. Yeah. And so they paint something, they do something, and when it's the right time, it gets done, she comes up, she grabs the things off the thing, and takes yeah. them, and they don't see her. They don't see her. Yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and one of them showed up at an auction. I believe it. Well, I believe it. Four or five of the most famous abstracts. She's, she's a clever. genuine thief. Yeah, but she was clever about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's taking kleptomania to the limit, I'd say. That's really your. No. That's well, you never. Well what are they going to do, Sue? So, you know, well, but no, but here she is a brilliant so woman, you obviously. There are times that you saw. And the stunning yeah. photograph. Yeah. This, yeah. this cast of characters. I'd look at them. Isn't that incredible? Whoa. Incredible. I mean, who's got it? That should go in an archive. That should go in an archive. Of the 60s. We should go through the 60s picture. Yeah. And it happened when something happened, there was something going on at LACMA and then everyone came over because Claus was there. That's and right. That's we, right. We hired somebody who takes class pictures. I'll bet, it, okay. I'll bet it, I can tell you exactly when it was because I remember we took the photograph on the steps of the LA County Museum. Wow. So, and, yeah. uh, and it was a thing I set up that, uh, that I was really excited about it and everybody was going to come and so forth and there was one of two days in my life that I was so sick I could not come. You didn't make it. I didn't, uh, nor for this. And when was that? It was about 67. It was, it was about six, it was just after the museum opened, about yeah. 66, 66, I guess. 66, maybe. Yeah, 67, exactly. I think. Yeah. It's closed. That, that's I exactly why we were. The other day that I didn't make it in my lifetime was the opening for Judy Chicago's dinner party in San Francisco. Oh, that was luck. 
Mostly from my gallery uh -huh. and, the Beacons, and the Beacons guys. That's right. Exactly. These Beacons guys were, were about that size. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now there was a guy called Dane Dixon. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember Dane? He got friendly with the Cooney, didn't he? Got friends, worked Cooney. for the Cooney later on yeah. in his life, but early he on. And oh, so these are the art movers. The no, he. Well, the art movers were second section. Yeah. Okay. But he was with the artists. Uh -huh. uh, he may have done a little something himself, but he adored artists, right. and they loved him, and he was. What he did for entertainment, he with a friend, would go to the toughest bars in southwest Los Angeles and uh, pick fights. <laughs> and he would do that for entertainment. Obviously, what did you do last weekend? Oh, he would always oh, say, he'd pick fights. <laughs> and he would kill whoever he fought. Absolutely kill whoever. And one day, we're sitting there, King Holtz, uh, Billy Al Bankston, uh, Craig Kaufman, Dane Dixon, and this guy, roughly this size, <laughs> twice Schwarzenegger size, yeah. comes up to the table, white suit, Beacons guy. Which one of you is Dave Dixon? Dave says, I'm Dave Dixon. Guy says, I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> and everybody kind of quiet. Yeah. And Dave says, look, he says, for Christ's sake, you want to fight, I'll fight you sometime. I don't want to fight you now. I'm here with my friend. The guy says, I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> Dane kind of sighs. He gets up. We follow him out of Barney's, the big guy right behind us, you know, blocking the sun. <laughs> Dane gets out onto the street. The guy gets directly behind him. Dane turns around and hits him one time right in the solar plexus. The guy doubles over. Dane scissors him and stuffs him in a big plastic Trash can. <laughs> <laughs> and we go back in. <laughs> a dumpster. A dumpster. A dump. A trash can wouldn't do it big enough. <laughs> I'm telling the story of Virginia Dwans with Eve Klein and, and John Altoon, where John started to give Eve, because fighting wasn't a joke. Oh, I remember that. Started yeah. to give Eve yeah. Klein a tough time. I don't know why. Because, because, he, because he was a, uh, a judo expert. Judo, yeah. right. But, but, but John didn't know. John didn't know. So someone gave the so black belt. said he's a black belt. <laughs> John went, uh oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> the fighting one. They had some of his films last year at the Cinematheque, including the one he made of the judo. Uh, it, he organized a judo exhibition in Paris in yeah, like the late 50s, which was. But I must tell you that these people who were at the top of their form in judo, none, they're all, they all have one thing in common ultimate security. I remember that Eve Klein never bat an eye. I mean, what he did, never. he sat there and smiled. John, more and more hostile, and Eve smiled <laughs> at him until somebody whispered in John's ear that you know, <laughs> there was trouble coming, and John backed off. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about it, because you've just mentioned <laughs> Gustin yeah. and Klein. Yeah. When I talked to Irwin, Bell, you know, that group of artists, Yeah. They talk about, I mean, Irwin says Gustin was a revelation for him. These little, yeah. rel relatively Irwin's small paintings, yeah. they, they used colors like pink, the, yeah, the other yeah, abstract expressions. Yeah, yeah. He said, but you put a Gustin next to a huge James Brooks, let's say, yeah, yeah. and it just blew it off the wall. Yeah. Eve Klein again with the monochromes yeah. and the, but the thing is, yeah. these are people who were not getting the recognition in New York. Now wait, wait, wait. Uh, give me two minutes on Gustin, because yeah. when in when we were still in Exposition Park at LA County Museum, uh, it must have been 1963 or 1964, the Guggenheim did a retrospective of Philip, uh, and it came to the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, okay? And I installed it, and I got to know Philip at that time, and then during the rest of my life, and did a big show later on. Uh, after the 70s, but the uh, 
key thing at that, at that moment is that Gustin, even then, in relationship to de Kooning and Klein and uh, uh, Pollock, uh, would be a little bit set aside. They were talking about him as, a, as an I think, I think, I think, from my, from my, oh, yeah. from, from my experience, a lot set aside. Yeah, okay, well, well, a there, lot set aside. Was Greenberg, he was, always, he was always thought to be French. And Greenberg, Greenberg was called that by, right? his, by his peers. Right. And Greenberg thought his work was effeminate. Mm -hmm. Effeminate. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly right. You know, but the thing, okay, but just to, to go back, the thing that was really interesting to me about Gustin, the thing that, of course, ties to Los Angeles, is that he grew up here, went to Manual Arts High School, never uh, got kicked out. He, Pollock, and Motherwell all went right. to Manual Arts High School. Yep. And, yeah. Uh, but that's what, uh, what, but, but wait, let me, just, let me just finish this, okay? So anyway, the point is that when he was there, he got kicked out of school for baiting what they used to call the Red Squad, you know, and that they used to beat up on communists and so yeah. forth and so on, and they were all very social and liberal. But he started doing at that time his Ku Klux Klan drawing, yeah. Yeah. as a matter of fact, and did a lot of drawings in that period of time. So actually, that whole beautiful interim of, of the things you're talking about, that yes. abstract impressionist phenomenon, yeah. really wasn't Philip. I mean, in 70, when he came back to that, that initial kind of imagery of social protest and, and political protest, that's when he found himself again. But, but, yeah, but, but you, can I make something? Yeah, sure. When I went to New York, uh, well, for French and for French and Company, that's you know, that's when David uh, thought I was the best thing since sliced bread. He took mm -hmm. me all over the place, and when he took me to the Cedar Barn for the first time, there was this round table in the back corner that you couldn't sit down at unless asked, and it was reserved for what the in group thought were the, the major group, yeah, insiders. Yeah. And uh, I noticed in in going there because I I knew Phil mm -hmm. Phil a little bit, but he wasn't at the table. He was thought of, he didn't file in, he didn't fall into a neat niche yeah. with right. the others who were right. selling. That's he right. was considered a too delicate, maybe a little too sensitive, mm -hmm. and he he was sort of left out in, in he, he didn't classify well, no one knew where to put him. Well, he was amazing, he was an amazing yeah. human being. Yeah, and, uh, and amazing, all those, tortured. Yeah. Two things about well, the tortured. Tortured. number one, he nice. and Pollock left Early when he got kicked right. out of uh, manual arts and went to Mexico. Mm -hmm. So that you know right. probably because the right. mural scene and the right. socialist scene there. Work the secure. Uh, the yeah. other thing is the same thing you described was exactly what happened in Max's Kansas City. There was a table you had to be invited to, and that yeah. table was Smithson, Mel Bachner, Richard Sale, yeah, right. Carl Andre. Right. Uh, the same. That was that table, yeah. and you had to be invited to that table, and it was right there. You went in the yeah. entrance, and it was pretty close to the entrance. Conceptual yeah. table. Yeah. Yeah. And they were our, they were debaters. I mean, they yeah. ripped your head off. Yeah. In fact, one day, uh, because they, some of them had stayed with us, they invited us over to the table. It was no big deal. You're from Los Angeles. You don't even know the rules. And so we're sitting there, and Carl Andre had just had a show, and and Richard Sir is giving him a, a, a thing in there talking about cardinal numbers and ordinal numbers, and you on the floor, right. and you on the ceiling. Right. And Richard goes into a, I'm not sure all of this should be on the final recording. That's all right, we'll let it go. Let it go. The, uh, Richard goes into this whole thing with Carl. Carl, you know, when I went to school and you were there, there's only three people in my life that, that uh, uh, I even care about when I do a show. You're the one I wait for and how important you've been to me. And at least now we're in tears. I'm yeah. going to go into yeah. the sentimental yeah. thing. Go to 10 minutes of it. I mean, high drama. And he says, but Carl, the last two years you've done shit. Why don't you stop painting? You're not doing art. Right. And then we sit there and go, what do we know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so after he walk up with Richard, I said, Richard, what the hell was all that about? Because I thought, well, they have this thing in New York that um, uh, you're going to get criticized in the highest level, so it's going to keep you sharp. So I mean, I'm still romantic about it, Richard. Right. I walked out here with my tail between my legs many nights, you know. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> did, did not have too high a thing. But that was that table. I mean, that's you sat right. at that table, yeah. you were ready to defend yourself. That's exactly no, that's, right. Well, and that actually is one of the great things about New York. But I want to get back for a minute. Um, everybody. History has been rewritten in a certain way so that people think if you were in New York in, let's say, 57, 58, 
Mm -hmm. It was all Rauschenberg and Johns. But the truth is, of course, it was mostly the second generation. And you go, upside express, and you go through the magazine. So the sales were in the money. Yeah, and Alfred Leslie. Alfred Leslie and Mike Goldberg. And that's right, exactly. Like that. yeah. that's right, that's now, what I'm saying about uh, Gustin, yeah. Mirandi, Eve Klein, is that this, by bringing them out here, you gave a different Basically. sort of precursor yeah. vision Absolutely. to some of the artists out here than the ones in New York were getting sure. right. from the, if we could talk a little bit about that. Good. I mean, that, that's a really yeah. interesting yes. thing I, about I couldn't those. agree more. One minute. Yeah, it was a, it, we did get a very candid, very specific kind of vision because we did not have this broad base of museums, the Museum of Modern Art, the Whitney and so forth and so on, and the museums were not doing all that much. So really what we saw at the galleries, if we didn't go to New York with them periodically, that was it. That's what we knew about art history, as a matter of fact, and that's what it brought into it, and that's what it impacted the artists, like Erwin, you're talking about in terms of Gustin and different things like that. But I think that that vision, that particular kind of vision as such also, was stimulated by people that, that you mentioned last night. Mm -hmm. uh, Walter, who is that funny person you can't put it in niches, but I can remember so vividly the first time I met Walter and going to his house over on Colby or wherever it was over yeah. in West LA, yeah. where the first thing I saw is that he had he had in his possession and owned a Joseph Cornell painting, exactly, however, a box, a exactly beautiful right. box, a parrot box, okay? Yeah. One of the really great ones. And I thought, good God, who is this person that owns the Cornell? Who Habitat I had to, for a shooting gallery. Yeah, so I had, yeah that's exactly right. Yeah. Who, who I happened to adore from yeah. my yeah. school days. But Walter <laughs> would go with groups of people, including myself, not big group, but little group, and we would go to Ralph Altman's primitive art shop, on, also right. on La Cienega Boulevard, right. okay? Where we looked at African fetishes two different times. We looked at the ones that Picasso and Brock were interested in, and we looked at the ones that German Expressionists were interested in and all of the different things that went with it. So there was at that time, in my mind, a thing that impacted the vision of LA art. If you talk about the impact of Mirandi, for example, yeah. the show that you did, which was the Lauren Alberts, obviously in relationship to Bankston and other artists at that right. time, how important it became Irwin in terms of Gustin, you know. And so you can pinpoint, literally, impact based on vision that you're pointing out was not the standard New York vision. No. And that's, and that's the no. truth of yeah. But it had a lot to do with what they experienced here. Oh, it, it had everything to do with the light things. out here, automobiles striking, uh, uh, just oh, that had the impact. way the lights were yeah. yeah. Impact, impact. Uh, yeah. Billy yeah. Al Bankston yeah. sat at the, at, at the feet of uh, Von Dutch. Von Dutch. Von Dutch. Von Dutch. Von Dutch. Oh, yeah. We had a great automobile striker out in the valley. Yeah. Billy Al learned uh, how to use a, a spray yeah. gun that's right. uh, in the valley. And he, well, we would talk about that a little bit, because obviously some of the color field guys in New York were using a spray gun, but Billy Al seemed to really use it differently. One, by using the motorcycle, yeah. the lacquer player. He used it like a car striker. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, and painting on masonite, which would yeah. give a whole different thing. That, that's, that's right, giving a whole different finish. That's right, yeah. exactly right. Yeah. It, was, it was a surfboard finish. Surfboard a surfboard finish, finish. Exactly, so, right. Yeah. exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. So, but a lot has been made, of course, of. Part of what you were saying was the fact if you didn't pay homage to this big scene in New York, they weren't going to pay homage to you. And yeah. people like Randy, of course, yeah. like, uh, Eve Klein, uh, Sam Francis, those just wouldn't go live there. Well, look at the reception yeah. Gustin got. You yeah, know, so when he Gustin started paying pay homage to it. I mean, he was considered oh, a really trainer. eccentric. A trainer. A trainer. Yeah. Well, a trainer. De Kooning. De Kooning. A supporter. What's the first trainer? Well, the first trainer, and then he supported it. That's, That's right. right. Well, right, Greenberg almost disowned. De Kooning yeah. after the women yeah. series. Yeah, yeah. But just to stay on this point, because I think it's an interesting one, uh, it always seemed to me that one of the great things about New York is what both of you, Everett, Irving, Stanley, are describing. You had to earn your place at the table. Yes. Yeah. And you had to defend that place at the table. Yes. That's the great thing about New York. The negative to me is that. Along with that, and I remember this growing up in Europe, if people would say, ah, he doesn't rate. You don't have to worry about him. Right. So, points, points of view be, became hardened. 
And the meek did not that. inherit the earth. No. <laughs> yeah. so, so, for instance, I love what Philip said when they asked him why he started painting, painting figuratively. He said, I got tired of adjusting a pink abstract shape to a blue abstract <laughs> shape. <laughs> you know, I was very lucky. I didn't have to go through the, the debate because I was too, I was too young and I didn't have enough of a track record to pick up and criticize from. So I came in as a kind of a wunderkind uh, label that David put on me. And the, the show, his show, had more people through it in, in five weeks of a run than any remembered show. It was wall-to-wall -wall people for five weeks. Yeah. So the other guys said, hmm, kid must know what he's doing. But I didn't have to. Now you're, talking about, you're talking about Gustin, you're talking about? No, I talk about what happened at the round table at the Cedar Park. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Nobody yeah. really yeah. Uh, grilled me. Yeah. They just yeah. said, well, he's young and, yeah. and maybe he can sell well. Uh, let's treat him nicely. So I, I was uh, spared that. But, uh, well, you weren't a competition either. No, no. But I do I want to make it. You, you were a rival. You yeah, weren't so. a painter. Yeah. That's right. Well, I've been a painter, I've been very different. But I was the kind of guy painters need to sell their work. Yeah. So Two things I want to talk about in our limited time is I think we haven't talked enough about what was happening in Pasadena and the Pasadena Museum, yep. which was a big issue in the oh, 60s. The and, we, and we've hardly talked about okay. And a little bit, Paul, you're going to go further in what the artists were doing at that time and the, uh, you know, what that scene was about. Sure. Well, let's, 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 let's talk let about me, the let me, finish, let me finish this sure. for just one quick second because uh, it's a point you were making. Uh, which had to do with you had to kind of earn your way sit at the table and so forth and so on in New York. One of the things that was impactful and important here about the artists around the Ferris Gallery is that they were a group and the fact that they didn't meet with you, as, as you said last night, as a yeah. go-off kind of situation, was yeah. they in fact had an impact on the world. Who showed at the gallery? No, we don't want him. No, we don't want him. Want him. Yeah, this is an interesting person. So forth. Absolutely so, correct. And getting together at Barnes For a long time, they, they didn't want Dean going. That's exactly right. Now. And I saw the same situation in, in Texas when I was there. If a group of people come together and lean on one another in a very exciting way and need each other in a very exciting way, yeah. something happens. Yeah, well, you understand. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, sure. But, but here, I'm just saying that it was also, it wasn't the same kind of power play that it was in New York, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But here, it was a question of a, of a group dynamic yeah. where I can remember so specifically uh, Banks is saying, all right, you know, Irwin had his show, now my show is coming up, i got to knock that fucker off the wall. That's exactly right. That's exactly what it was. Exactly. Well, and let's follow up on this. I think that's actually, when we look at how that group challenged each other, yeah. and what happened when the group dissipated, I mean, you know, it's, it's sort of sad to see, for me, because I think one of the best things when they do the Ferris show at Kagosha was to see how fabulous those early base could Mm. But Bankston, when he was no longer challenged by that group, I mean, God, did you do awful paintings? In the, in the That's group. exactly right. I'll tell you somebody else who was an outsider from the beginning until he became an insider, finally, was Ed Pichet. That's right. Absolutely. Ed Pichet was always put to one side. They didn't uh, criticize him, but they didn't accept him. Yeah. Well, what did he do? And he was isolated. Which, uh, that's right, they didn't write it, but they gave him a cold show. They gave him a cold show. Well, but, exactly. he was, but he, Ed, and Joe uh, were most influenced by your show of Jasper Johns because both of them immediately did lithographs taken almost directly See, from the There's, from the, there's from the, the evidence of why it's worth the effort. You know, you bring something like that to look, and they, it's but a ripple but effect. But the point is that they were the out the part Billy Al Bankston working like an abstract expression, yeah, right. and then all of a sudden yeah. doing a, a, a shepherd yeah, or a heart or a heart or, 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 a, or a heart had a lot to do with Jasper. No question. Yeah. No question. Moon although, although Billy was we'll never Moon tag. Moon tag. Moon tag. Moon tag. I actually. But 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 the sounding thing about Pasadena. Pasadena represented hope. Hope. Oh, it was a museum. So vital. To what was happening in Los Angeles. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Where did it open? Yeah. Nick had the, the best gallery yeah. openings. Yeah. Nick's were okay. Yeah. Your openings weren't a big deal. No. Nick's were. Because I stopped focusing on yeah. I couldn't stand the tumble. No. Nick liked the comeback. Yeah. 
What do you mean they weren't a big deal? They were wonderful. God, I no, know. No, they were, but... but Larry Nick, Bell dressed like Charlie Chaplin. No, that was Eddie oh, yeah. Wright and, and <laughs> no, the cowboy hat. And Van Nick, Burger, Nick's yeah. were a party kind of thing for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Well, I realize that. It was, it was different, but at the same time, those early openings were so important because even though you didn't have 10 billion people, you had the same 50 people. Yeah, that's right. Time, all having and a, great a lot time, of spirit. And all having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. I remember at, when the Pasadena Art Museum closed, uh, I went to a dinner party and the lady there said to me, Mr. Blum, you know the California situation. I said, yeah, I do, I do know the California situation. Uh, I want to talk about Pasadena, she said. And I said, fine, I'd be happy to talk about Pasadena. And then she said, who's the devil and who's the angel? Which is just an odd way to characterize yeah, it. Like and I said, how interesting. And I said, I'm one of the few people who can tell you. And she said, please. And I said, Bob Rowan. Bob Rowan is the devil, and Bob Rowan is the angel. <laughs> <laughs> so please, go. Same man. It's a great man. We're the same man. You know, having, having, having wanted to expand it, right. and having expanded it, he couldn't support it. Yeah. No, it wasn't. I mean, and then that incredible piece that Copeland's wrote for our for oh, you know, yeah. uh, North Simon and the Takeover, which got him fired. And, yeah. Uh, well, the, the, but the other thing, go back earlier in the Pasadena situation, yes, it did represent hope, no question about it. Because the, even though you look at the exhibition records over years, <coughs> prior to the Diamond Wall, there did Duchamp, for example, and later Cornell, and yes. Jim Demetri, and did the uh, no, no, a number of things. Uh, yeah. But the, uh, it wasn't an amazing record, but it was local. It was a thing that dealt with the artists in this immediate region, uh, much more so than anything that had to do with national. Well, let, let's start by, I mean, Pasadena, when you see, it was about the funkiest space yeah, still is. You, you can <laughs> imagine. It's still, it, it was all <laughs> hallways. Well, frankly, it was a job. job. No, it was impossible. It was all hallways. It was in a, a fake Asian theme. Oh, you mean the Las Vegas? Oh, yeah. yeah. The, 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 the great Pasadena. Yeah. 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 Let's start with the early. Yeah. Yeah. That worked. A woman, <laughs> a, a woman whose name I'm going to forget built it. I mean, not really set up. I mean, yeah, you know, it, 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 it looked like a mausoleum. That's yeah. right. <laughs> it was a big central courtyard. That's right. Big, 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 uh, so does yeah. so so Beacon. It was all yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was always dark. Final yeah. resting yeah. place. The Beacon. Yeah, final resting place. Lovely. That's where all California painters are buried, right? The Let's beacon. go through a different era. Suppose we begin with the Tom Levitt, Tom Levitt's era, where you have the first show of pop art. Yeah. You have the Duchamp retrospective. Right, right. Um, you know, what are some memorable? Well, Tom, Tom did on an annual basis an exhibition called the Phelan Awards, okay? And Irving will remember this. The LA County Museum at that time had a juried annual exhibition, okay? Pasadena had the Phelan Awards. That's about the only time that local artists would be represented in exhibitions that, in, in that way, okay? Uh, and they would win prizes. The big lament in terms of, of uh, LA County Museum is that they would have jurors that would jury out the basements and the, yeah. and the, and the other things right. I find that was a real rarity when one got in. Right. Uh, but in the Faden Awards, it was so inclusive you know, that, that kind of everybody was in there, as a matter of fact. And that was Tom Levitt's thing. The other thing that was important prior to that, but nonetheless important, was simply the fact that they had there the Blue Four collection. See it very often. Got the show. That it's supposed to go to UCLA. Yeah. But, it, yeah. but it just literally yeah. made the Pasadena so a haven right. for people who were interested in art. Now, that's cool. it. And, uh, yeah. In contemporary art. Now, now, now the Segal so show was not on view most of the time? Right. Really? It was not on view most of the time? No, it was not on view most of the time. In fact, uh, when the, uh, uh, the agreement is that they were, to, well, they gave it to the Pasadena. She gave it to the Pasadena. Well, she gave it, no, she gave it first. The UCLA and yeah. the courts kind of helped decide. That's right. As to what you could do, Pasadena said they'd accept it. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. But the issue, the issue essentially, 
was that they were to publish a catalog within 10 years of the collection and so forth, on, which they never did, okay? Uh, the exhibit was rarely on exhibition as a, as a composite unit, as a matter of fact. Uh, and now, thanks to the Museum of the North Simon Museum. And finally, they published a catalog. Yeah. Of all the, they don't own it, you know. No, I know, nobody owns it. Nobody owns it, it's on this trust. trust. You could, you could petition for it if you want to. Yeah, that's so right. The Getty Museum is the Getty Museum. Getty Museum. So Although it's the Simon Museum. But the yeah, they're, they're fulfilling it now. But I, but I tried to petition to get it in San Francisco when I was there yeah. because uh, I realized that it was a loose agreement yes. and that they not met the requirements, so-called limits of the Getty If you could petition, work. you could continue with the Getty It was, it was like a challenging situation where they, everything was legitimate when you had at Gulka Shire. That's right. Uh -huh. It was the foundation. Everything. You could build from there. The other thing to, to go into a little bit is the topography of the city. I mean, well, I think what people wouldn't realize now, where traffic is so miserable, I mean, no one in Venice ever goes to Pasadena. No. Maybe once a year. Yeah. But it was, well, it was the first frequent to Pasadena. But I'm saying it, was, it wasn't that bad. Then. It wasn't that bad. You could get there. So, yeah. I mean, your gallery was on La Cienega. Yeah. You know, that's 10 miles to the Pasadena Museum. Yeah. But it didn't seem like something that you would do anything in the world to get out of. Uh, no, it's a, it's a two hour journey today. You know, yeah. So we went, we went on a. First it's not two days. Yeah. 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 But we went yeah. on almost a weekly <laughs> basis to the Pasadena Museum. That's right. Yeah, it, it wasn't it was any different than trying to go to a no, movie. They did start shows, as Henry said, Lackman didn't do at the time. That was there. Uh, so that, I don't know each time the Kelly show or this, uh, the Stella show, I don't doubt if they started Which those. One? But they, they did uh, start shows in Pasadena. At Pasadena, yes, Pasadena. they did. Yeah. So they did. Yeah. When, when the Walter Kelly became there and Jim Dimitri and came yeah, there, and Alan Lickman came there. Yeah, I remember even people like Alexis Smith and Alan Woodersburg got their. Shows that did some travel. But those were the 70s. The 70s. Well, but the 60s. By 62, they were already organizing. So I mean, they have a full show. slate of shows. That's correct. From when 62 did the new Pasadena Art Museum open? Yeah, when did it open? Um, uh, 70. 70. Yeah. Not till then? Not yeah, then. it closed in 69 and reopened. Reopened in 70. But uh, let me talk about the, I think the, this seemed to me a very crucial moment. Walter's kind of valedictory show at Pasadena in LA was the uh, 65 Sao Paulo Biennale right. exhibition, right. where he paired um, Irwin, Bankston, and Bell, I believe, with Judd, um, Stella, Stella, and was it Flavin? No, 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 but it's 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 Flavin. But in any so, case, how did it, because that's a perceptual minimal aesthetic element. Yeah, how did that, and, and with a um, retrospective of Newman as the linchpin, mm -hmm. you know, they, they called the show at some point uh, Six Tugs Towing a Barge into, uh, <laughs> into Port. But I mean, it seemed that that gave, I mean, I know Irwin says that that really made a huge difference in his career, both at going down to Sao Paulo and then going to Washington Afterwards, that's right. Yeah. It's well, probably more amongst the artists than it would be amongst the community. That's more, more about the community. Absolutely. But it feeds out of the artists. Oh, no, it's fine. You know? Well, but one of the, one of the stories at that time, of course, is when the show did come back to Washington, D.C., and they were coming down to review it from the, uh, the New York Times. Uh, what was his name? The great critic. Is it Candidate? No, after Candidate. Hill Kramer? Yeah, Hill yeah. Kramer yeah. Yeah. came down to, to Washington the exhibition and he wanted to interview Bob and Bob was back there and uh, so they walked into the room where Bob Fain's were and sat down on the bench and everyone chatted for a little while and, uh, and finally then he said, well now let's go see the art. Actually that was Clement Greenberg. Uh, it was, it was not Clement. Not, Clement. not Clement. Kramer. Yeah, it was Clement. No. Sorry. Um, it was uh, Irwin's dot painting. Ah, uh, they're very visible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But he, they put him in a room, which had all this foam marble, uh, <laughs> you know, sort of uh, wall treatments, and uh, so he had painted 
the whole wall around it to make everything dis disappear. So the paintings yeah, would, yeah. and he said it did make the paintings very subtle, but that they were sitting there for half an hour, and then Gruber <laughs> says, well, let's see the paintings. <laughs>